Now we're going to discuss finding the inverse of a particular matrix. This particular matrix that we're going to go over right now is a 2 by 2 matrix. Okay, there is a formula that we will use that will help us to calculate the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. The formula is this one here, and it looks fairly daunting. We've got several uh, different letters in here. We've got two of them that are A. Uh, remember that a capital letter is how we represent a matrix. So then we've got an A, B, C, D, and then we've got several. We've got two more A's over here. So let's kind of walk through it, and um, let's go through an example as well to kind of help a little bit. But basically what we're going to do, we're going to do one, the inverse of this matrix here is 1 divided by these two items multiplied together, subtracted, then subtract these two items, which are multiplied together, times this new matrix here. So we'll go through it. Um, it looks fairly daunting, but as we get a little bit of practice and as we go through some, hopefully that will help a little bit. So the problem that we're going to do an example problem here, we're going to use some numbers instead of just these A, B, C, and D letters. So here's our example problem. And we're looking for the inverse of this one, and the way that we'll denote that is the inverse notation. This is a to the negative 1. The very first step says a times d, and a times d here, so we're basically going to cross multiply these two here. It's just 3 times 8. 3 times 8, and then we're going to subtract b times c. Here is our b and our c, so we're going to subtract, and we're going to multiply those two together. Subtracted by negative 10 times negative 6 multiplied by this new matrix here. And this new matrix, the way that we're going to uh, have this matrix, the way that we're going to input it in, is it's going to be driven from our original matrix here. So I'm going to, let's write our original matrix right down here, uh, just for a reference point. And again, this is not going to be the matrix that we'll put here, but this is just our reference point, so we can see where we um, got this matrix that we're going to plug in here, where it came from. The very first thing, if you'll notice here, this D and this A, well, we have a D and an A here. These two basically are flip-flop. They switch positions on us. So these two numbers here are going to have to switch positions, okay? They're going to change. Uh, this was a 3. Now that will become an 8. This was an 8. Now it will become a 3. So we're going to write that in with our new one here. And all these two did is just switch spots. Now then we'll also notice on this one here, B and C did not switch spots. It was originally B in the upper uh, right-hand corner, and it's still B in the upper right-hand corner. And C is the same there. Those two did not switch spots. But what you will notice here, these were positives, now they're negatives. What we're basically going to do here is change the sign on both of those. We're going to change the sign on this one and this one. These are both negative signs, meaning when we change the sign and plug them back in, they're going to turn into positive signs. So here we go. Now, if this one were a positive 6, we would change it into a negative 6, whatever the opposite sign was. So, but anyway, so th these two do not change spots at all, they just change their sign. Well, now that we have this one, let's kind of get rid of this. This was just for illustration purposes only anyway. So let's get rid of that. Now we've got this one. We've plugged in all of our numbers correctly. Now it's just a matter of simplifying it and multiplying it together. So we need to kind of go through and simplify this. 3 times 8 is 24, and negative 10 times negative 6 would be 60. So we've got 24 minus 60. So here we go. This one, I did not change this matrix at all. All I did is simplify this, 24 minus 60. Okay, well, 24 minus 60 is negative 36. So let's simplify that just a little bit further. Okay, so this is the same thing as 1 over negative 36 times this matrix here. And again, I didn't change that one. But now we just need to simplify it one step uh, in which we, we multiply each one of these components inside here by 1 over negative 36. So let's do that. 8 times 1 over negative 36 is going to be negative 8 thirty-sixths. 10, uh, excuse me, 10 times 1 over negative 36 would be negative 10 over 36. 6 times 1 over negative 36, you kind of get the picture here. We're multiplying each one of these 3 times 1 over negative 36 would be 3 over negative 36. And you'll notice here I did not reduce these. You will have to reduce these. That's our next step, okay? So we know that 8 36 can be reduced even further. Let's see, uh, 4 will go into both of those. So that will turn into negative 2 ninths. 10 and 36, those also share a common factor that we can pull out. That shares a common factor of 2. So that one would essentially be 5 18 negative 5 18 excuse me. Uh, 6 and 36, of course they have a 6 that they share in common, so that will reduce down to negative 1 6 You can see it going here. I'm just reducing each one of these as we go. 3 and 36, they have a 3 in common, so this one here would be negative 1 12th. And that would be our final answer on this one. So 
essentially we're just plugging it in. We've got to make sure we plug them in correctly. Then simplifying, and when we get down here, even if you end up with a fraction, we're just going to multiply each one of these components on the inside by that fraction on the outside, and then just reduce it. And that will be our final answer. You're fine to leave it in a fraction. You can also convert it to a decimal. Um, either way will be just fine.